You may have seen this famous graph before, a lovely pie chart showing the origin of over 80,000 words. It shows that English has been far, far biased towards Latin and French words. But people have long suspected that this is not fully representative of actual English. People don't just speak the dictionary. In the video on Tongen, I touched briefly on the difference between loanwords and native words as a pretense for determining the nature of loanwords in that language. But now, instead of touching on them briefly, I'm going to touch a bit deeper. <laughs> TV Guy from Has Been Hotel shows an alternate graph where even in a medical research paper full of technical language, native English words form the majority. But what, am I just supposed to trust some hack? The guy who made this graph probably doesn't even wipe. So much like any good scientist, I'm gonna do my own research. Obviously, I would expect something similar to happen where native words outnumber Norman words in normal speech, but I also have a second hypothesis, that this will vary based on the formality of the source. I think it's not unreasonable to say that when it coincides with native vocabulary, the Norman equivalent is far more formal sounding. Also, that's what the Vox study said. So, I'll be drawing from three sources of varying formality. The least formal is the tech Blade video Ruining Minecraft Monday with Jay Schlatt, in which I measured the first 150 morphemes he used, not including personal pronouns, articles, or proper nouns. And what I think will really set mine apart is that I'm going to remove repeats. I think this will make it easier to draw conclusions. Let's skip to the data. My results were similar to this graph, though I definitely think limiting to only unique words skewed the results away from Old English. After all, keywords like pronouns, conjunctions, and most prepositions are all Old English, which are reused constantly as function words. Even still, we see a vast majority of native English words with a smaller portion derived from Anglo-Norman. Latin, which in most graphs is on par with Norman, instead comes in a distant third, with Old Norse closing it out. The others, kit and coupon, were loaned from Dutch and modern French. System and schedule are Norman, but ultimately from Greek, which influenced the spelling. But where's the trend line? Well... It's obviously difficult. We can see hints of the formality theory. Technoblade doesn't use a lot of Norman words, but the ones he does use, like viewer, subscriber, button, battle, and event, are on some level jargon that he uses to describe his specific field playing Minecraft for an audience, but these are all based on my subjective analysis on a small data set, and everyone knows that only one trial is not enough to actually draw conclusions from. So I decided to open this book about OCD my mom kept trying to get me to read, and I got a new corpus, which hopefully contrasts by being more formal. And it did. Old English is again in the lead, but without a majority, and Anglo-Norman is right on its heels. Latin also did much better. In general, though, one thing I noticed is that it doesn't really matter how much pure Norman vocabulary you use, there's just a base of Old English words you need to get through before you can even get to the free vocabulary that alternates origin. After that trial, my opinion was starting to shift. It seemed like, in general, maybe it wasn't that formal words were Latin, maybe it was specific words. I mean, it's not a big jump in formality. The book is still meant to be read by average people. But the specificity, moving from a guy chatting with friends to an informative book, is massive. Let me put that another way. I could go a whole week without using the word fancy, but when that's what I need to describe something as, I don't have another word to use. Even beyond content function, that means my choice to only use unique vocabulary would definitely be skewing this towards Norman. But could we make it a majority? Well, I grabbed a scientific research paper about mating habits in barnacles. It was a fascinating read and it used tons of scientific words. What's the outcome? Well, once again, Old English, although slightly less, and Norman actually decreased, replaced by Latin, though this can largely be a attributed to the nature of the words loaned, scientific. One thing I really found striking is that the Technoblade talking was the only corpus where the proportion of Norman words decreased when you sorted only by verbs. Otherwise, it increases significantly. I chalk this up to a big reason. Function words obviously can't be loaned, and content words like nouns are likely to have a pre-existing word. I mean, sometimes loan words are used for novel concepts, but what novel concepts exist in French but not English? For adjectives, these are mostly derived off of nouns or verbs, so they don't really factor into this idea, but verbs certainly do, because they often lack a translation. Now, that's not to say there's no translation for a strain in English, it's just that it's two words. One word supplies a meaning, and the other makes it more specific. That definitely leans into the theory that Norman words are more specific. Or maybe that's a flaw in my methodology, because that's literally what these verbs translate to. It's a choice that I've glossed hold back as two morphemes and restrain as one. And yet, I stand by that decision. This could be broken up in English, but I restrained my ankle. It's not the same as I restrained my ankle. And words like observe, presume, destroy, compose, reflect can't be broken up, even though they could be in Norman, and their English equivalents, watch over, think before, break down, put together, look back, can't 
can be. So on some level, this validates my idea of Norman morphemes being more specific, because they literally are. But all that proves is that there's a way to explain them being more specific if they are. I wouldn't be doing my due diligence unless I made another experiment to prove it. Fortunately, there exists a simple way to check for this. If the idea is, like I phrased earlier, that there's a base of key English words you have to use before you get to a set of free vocabulary that alternates between them, then if I extend the data sets, we'll have already covered that core and more and more of the unique vocabulary should be coming in from Norman sources. I mean, assuming you say every word at least once in your lifetime, then your graph would look like this one. So I extended out the Technoblade graph out for the next 150 unique words. And while there's certainly a few possible confounding variables, the trend is clear. The words of Norman origin swell by 5 percentage points, while the words of Old English origin drop by 10. Latin vocabulary nearly doubles, and even Norse vocabulary grows slightly. It's a small victory, but a victory nonetheless. But you may be asking Zaniop, I don't care about definition. How do I recognize a loan word just by looking at it? Well, it's actually quite complicated, but there are a couple tricks, tidbits, shortcuts that can maybe give you a bit of an edge. For Old English, the th or the sounds represented by a th are very distinctive for Germanic languages. They never occurred in Latin. They are present in Greek words, but you'll be able to tell a Greek word when one shows up. The letter W is a hallmark of native words because it was spelt with a V in Latin and eventually made a V sound. The words loaned into French from High German are immune. The digraph OW making an O sound, a silent GH, or one that spells F, and any of the Anglo-Saxon prefixes B, out, with, or a. Uh. Anglo-Norman words are notable for the letter V, also plain Latin, the two are basically indistinguishable. Although, like I covered in this video, the sound existed in English for two reasons. Both of them required it to be in the middle of a word. Words that start with a V have to be French. Similarly, J is present in many native words, but only at the end and always spelt DG. J was reinserted into English by French, and the spelling J or any word initial J sound is French. Oftentimes, a CH sound before A, random shortening of vowels not in the first of three syllables, and any of the Latin prefixes sub, ad, con, or ex. Additionally, many Greek words are received through French or Latin, so Greek hallmarks become Norman ones. These include the use of ch when k or ph and y to make the kid or price vowels. Word final y making the fleece vowel is common from all sources. Some vowel combinations like ae or oe making an e sound are also to be expected. Additionally, word final ia. The long vowel u is a separate phenomenon from the historic long u, which was respelled as ou and evolved into ow. However, the long u spelling also replaced a historic o sound in many cases, but oftentimes it's Norman in origin. Similarly, qu is rare in native English and can only occur at the start of syllables. Norse is a bit more difficult. The biggest hallmark is ska, although there are some Norman words, but in general, every word that starts with ska is Norse. But also, that's it. And this is where things start to fall apart. But let's just jump off into the deep end anyways. Word final O is commonly from Spanish or Italian, but also shortenings of French and Latin words. Words still ending in us or um are Latin or Greek via Latin. If a word starts with al and you don't recognize the rest of it, it might be Arabic. If a word alternates between consonants and vowels and ends in a vowel, Hawaiian or Maori. These two are also the logical conclusion if it has a bunch of vowels in a row. If parts of the word are repeated, it's probably from a language that has reduplication, like one from the southern half of consonants, but those are probably borrowed from their resident colonizer. But in the end, there's no way to tell the etymology of a word just by looking at it, and historical linguistics is a fantasy. Make sure to subscribe to join the Zinniop Mass Grave.